Right, so um, earlier on we read the passage from the letter to Ephesians and we read it in a normal version of the Bible. But there's a version of the Bible that's a paraphrase where they've, they've kind of, rather than translated every single word, they've tried to translate the general meaning. And I thought I would read this passage to you now because I found that a bit more, probably powerful when I read it. So I'm going to read that now. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best material, and put them to use so you'll be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no weekend war that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all of his angels. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. And this is at the end of the letter that Paul wrote. He's writing it from prison, where he was put in prison because of his faith. And yet, he spends his time that he's there sending letters to various churches to try and strengthen their faith. He knows firsthand how hard things are for Christians at that time, but he also recognises that this isn't just a human fight. Being a Christian is still not easy nowadays. There are many people against you. In this country, we don't tend to get in prison for it, which is brilliant, although in some countries they do. Um, there's also the devil against you. The devil is like the opposite of God. And instead of wanting the best for you, he wants you for himself. Instead of you wanting you to have an eternal life with God, he wants you to spend eternity separated from God. Instead of the peace that lots of us look for, he wants war, and he will do all that he can to make these things happen. You can think about it like goodies and baddies, if you want, with God being the goodie and the devil being the baddie. The Bible tells us that in the end, God wins. But this spiritual battle is ongoing until the end of the world, and we are caught up in it. We're constantly tempted to do the wrong thing and turn away from God, and it's the devil that tempts us to do that. The devil also tries to prevent people from becoming Christian in the first place, with life things getting in the way. It's a real war, which many people ignore or are not aware of. And although we've talked about the devil being the baddie, he's not a cute little cartoon character with red horns and a tail, but he is a spiritual being, directly in opposition to God, trying to win you for himself. However, there isn't any need to despair. We are given the tools that we need to fight. We're not fighting alone, and we can choose to be on God's side, the winning side. Julius Caesar just used to wear his armour when he went into battle. He didn't wear it the rest of the time. But the armour that we've been talking about today, that Paul talks about, is much more of a way of life rather than something that we just put on occasionally when we're going into battle. The first piece of armour is the belt of truth. We did use dressing gown belts to be these, but this is God's truth that he gives us to prevent us from the devil's lies. The more we strengthen ourselves learning about what God's truth, what he thinks about us and what he thinks about life, the better that we are able to stand firm and not trip over the devil's lies, uh, lies and schemes. The breastplate of white righteousness um, protects us as we put on that righteousness of Jesus. When we wear God's peace like a pair of shoes or welly boots, um, it helps to keep us standing even when trouble and tragedy come along. It also helps us to move forward and share the gospel with other people. The shield of faith can help to protect us from anything that comes our way. Um, and the helmet protects a soldier's head, brain and mind. It also helps him focus ahead and not be distracted. 
Salvation for us does the same. It spiritually protects our thoughts and keeps us focused on God. The sword of the spirit, where we use lightsabers, um, is the Bible. We are asked to use what it says in the Bible to tell others about Jesus, as well as to defend our faith when we're asked to. It can be used to attack and to defend. And prayer is what brings all these things together and is key in the Christian life. We always encourage each other to pray for each other. We always say you can ask for prayer here if you want to, and we continue to do that. We have got the prayer pot up on the shelf, and you're welcome to put prayer requests in there. And you can put your name on them or leave them anonymous. It's up to you. But prayer is key. Prayer is the way that we can protect each other, we can strengthen each other, and we can bind all of these armour um, together. So has anyone watched The Mandalorian? <laughs> the Mandalorians, they use Beskar armour. Um, and that's the best around. It's an alloy that seems to be almost impossible to get through. But it's really hard to get hold of. And the Mandalorians have to spend a lot of time earning each new piece of armour to gradually build up the protection that they've got. It doesn't work like that for us. We can have all of the armour at once if we want to, just by asking for it. And it is there for us to use. So what do you think? Are there challenges ahead that you need God's armour for? Maybe you're starting the new term at school. Maybe you're taking the children back to school. Maybe you're at a crossroads for a new chapter in your life. Looking at the long slog to Christmas with dread. Maybe there's general difficulties in your life and you just want some extra support. Who knows? But will you change how you start your day in the morning? And maybe consider adding the armour of God to your routine. So maybe when we talked earlier about the things you do first of all in the morning when you wake up, how about praying and asking God to help you, um, thinking about the different aspects of that armour that you'd like to protect you throughout your day. And that might be something that maybe I should do first rather than checking my phone messages. So just we, we've, we've gone through this quite quickly, um, but I am going to pray to finish, and then we are going to play an incredibly cheesy song which I'm not going to apologise for, but it's all about the armour of God, and I thought it was quite fun. So I'll pray first. Father God, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you give us everything that we need. Thank you that you give us the protection and skills that we need to resist the devil. And thank you that you have already won. We ask that you do protect each of us this week and this term as we continue to live our lives for you. Amen. <laughs>